so I just start my PowerPoint. And here we go. So welcome to uh, my lecture, Benvenuti a tutti. Uh, nice to have you here. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, um, Italian cuisine, uh, my relationship with food, my way to communicate through food, things that I've learned, uh, passions, uh, so many, many uh, points. So I would like to introduce you first to uh, what we are going to expect. If we start now with uh, a map of Italy, and you see already the typical uh, Italian peninsula with the shape of, of what we call like the boot in Italian, lo stivale. Then uh, uh, in this particular map, you have different uh, traditional pasta dishes that uh, are put on different area of the peninsula. And these are region of Italy. Region uh, means uh, like larger departments uh, that uh, uh, have their special uh, culture, their special tradition, they are also quite different uh, history. So also if Italy is a small country, um, if let's say uh, compared to a United States state could be the size more or less of New Mexico, uh, then you have a, a, a different variety of, uh, of tradition, of uh, food and of ingredients. And uh, what I want to talk about with you today are different topics. My first is my passion for cooking, where it comes from, how it uh, developed and uh, uh, what I did with it. Uh, then I would like to introduce you to uh, some Italian, when I call regional food, so the, the varieties of the different region uh, areas of Italy, compared to the Italian American food. Because in the United States, you have uh, um, a lot of uh, Italian immigrants that uh, took tradition and reinvented it or adapted it. So this is also an interesting topic. Then I did my own little survey uh, asking to professional friends that work in gastronomy and uh, in Italy and also other friends uh, to describe me with a couple of keywords, the essence for them uh, of the Italian cuisine. And uh, so I want to share with you the result. Then I made a comparison uh, between uh, Italian typical regional uh, iconic dishes and iconic Italo-American dishes to give you an idea of the differences. Then I take you to get to check some uh, food rules. This is kind of the uh, things that you do not eventually uh, know before you visit an Italian restaurant in Italy and uh, you might want to be aware of. They can be helpful and then some conclusion. Okay, so let's start now with my passion for cooking. Um, uh, we don't have it in our gene. I am Italian, but this doesn't mean immediately that I am a great cook or I know how to cook. So you have to learn it uh, to cook. And uh, I learned to cook, not in Italy, but I learned to cook in the United States. This is quite strange. If you look at this map, uh, Allentown is the place where I was an exchange student and I lived there, a, a wonderful experience with a great family. And my host family, uh, because I was Italian, uh, thought that I could automatically be a good cook. So they trusted me and I was just coming from a normal Italian family when my mom was a very good cook. So I asked her to send me from Italy on a regular basis some recipe and I would just try them out and uh, my host family would be my uh, guest. And uh, I loved it. And uh, we started to invite people. So it became really social, nice, interesting and inspiring. Uh, so this is where I started to know, to learn how to cook it. And uh, I'm doing it ever since. Some year later, already as an adult, uh, to be precise, 21 years ago, uh, my husband and myself, uh, Matthias, you know him already, he's a tour manager, he has done other lecture and he's doing other lectures uh, for Passport as well. We decided to go on a travel around the world 
and uh, cooking um, was a way to experience not only to learn different uh, realities different uh, uh, social situation that by cooking buying groceries uh, being in contact with people going to cooking classes in different places uh, it brings you close to also other culture but uh, for my particular interest i was trying to live as often as possible at people houses and to share their experience and once you are in the kitchen the kitchen is the best place in the house so you have a nice conversation you le you learn a lot so that was an experience that for sure changed my life and my perspective to it and I came back with so many ideas that um, uh, not only I started to work on a book uh, about this experience, but uh, with Matthias, we put together a show that was uh, uh, different, like a, uh, uh, this is for Germany. So you read there is written Ein Weltmenü, and this is, was a world menu, a dinner combined with our uh, slides and music. And, uh, and we went around and did this show. Um, uh, in this particular picture, I was in Portugal, uh, a, a wonderful friend of us, uh, Christina, she lives now in, in um, Florida. Uh, she invited us, she organized it, and uh, I got a restaurant all for myself, but I had no help and I had to cook for 50 people. So that was quite challenging with 13 different courses. But uh, we made it also to be then in the press. And so this experience, actually, a passion uh, became also an income. And uh, so I could do something with it. So. Talking about this, now I want to introduce you to uh, a, a little, a very teeny tiny historical part of uh, what happened, why people uh, emigrated from Italy, and so why from Italy they took overseas also uh, their cuisine and their tradition. Uh, Italy has a very, very long story, but I'm just con con concentrating of the uh, late 1800, middle, middle of the 1800. If you see in this map, uh, you read in the title in blue, the unification of Italy, 1858-1870. Italy was, um, like many other countries in Europe, not a unified country. It was divided in many different uh, uh, provinces, uh, different uh, uh, states that were um, under the domination or the occupation also of foreign uh, powers. Uh, we had the Pope state, the Papal state in the middle of Italy. So by 1861, Italy was unified then under the uh, crown of the um, Sabua family from the north of Italy, the area in purple. And, um, and the, the situation was difficult because there was a gap in between the northern part of Italy that was uh, trying to catch up with the Industrial Revolution, so developing towards, let's say, the rest of Europe, and the part, southern part of Italy that was uh, uh, still fighting to have uh, um, an old-fashioned kind of system uh, overcome in order to get modernized as well. So uh, by the time of uh, 1880, many people, especially from uh, the southern part of Italy, so we are talking about Naples, we are talking about uh, Calabria, we are talking about Sicilia, uh, so different uh, area, um, they emigrated and many of them, uh, around 4 million, emigrated to the United States. Uh, some directly, for example, from Sicily to New Orleans, so where, where they went there to work in the uh, sugarcane plantation or tobacco fields or cotton fields uh, after then the slavery was uh, uh, not there anymore, there was manpower needs, and some others then the majority went towards uh, uh, New York and uh, Ellis Island was the place where they arrived. When they arrived, you can see they had not that much that they could take with them. They were relatively poor. They were uh, emigrating to find a better way of life and eventually also jobs and, uh, and a future. Some of them, of course, wanted to go back. But the idea was at first to make money and make a living. They had to go through a health uh, check and then eventually they would 
uh, reach the area where they would uh, then leave, uh, uh, were probably hoping to to get to know where other people would know them so that they will just uh, make a community. And uh, there was an abundance of, uh, of uh, food that for many was just uh, new. So uh, then some of them started to open small little restaurant or guest houses and uh, mainly for their own people. Only in the 1920s, we started to see that the Italian uh, restaurants start to cater also for the um, for the other um, groups uh, living in the United States. But this is mainly because of the depression. It was a hard time and uh, Italian food was relatively cheap and was uh, tasted good. So it started to become quite uh, popular. When we talk about this difference also between the north it's part of Italy and the south, uh, um, uh, and we also have to consider the fact that, that the geography of Italy has, uh, also if it's a small country, has uh, a different peculiarities that create in such a small country a variety of, uh, um, of ingredients, of tradition. And if we start, for example, in the north part, we have the Alps, the highest mountain range that we have in Italy. And uh, uh, then uh, we have more than 5,000 miles of coast line. And in the middle, we have all different kinds of range of beautiful hills uh, with uh, uh, different uh, cultivation and agriculture. Therefore, the products that you get from these different areas could be like the wonderful cheeses from the mountain or the incredible seafood from the Mediterranean Sea or uh, a variety of fruit, vegetables, olive oil, wines, everything. So in such a small country, such a variety. And there is also another aspect that is the occupation or the domination of different uh, civilization uh, that came to Italy. Some of them stayed long. Uh, and uh, their influence is also in the cuisine. So you will always find some things to um, to connect to uh, other culture rather than the, what we consider the Italian culture, which is quite new. Huh? Something that is uh, common, not only for Italy, but uh, for the Mediterranean area is, uh, so we can also have some similarities in, for example, in Spain or in Greece uh, or in Croatia, uh, is the Mediterranean diet. The Mediterranean diet um, is, uh, as this pyramid, you can see it, uh, is not a diet, uh, but is like a, 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 a pattern of eating, a system of eating based on tradition of local products, of, of fresh product, products, and with a very good balance. So uh, if you follow this pyramid, you see that uh, combining uh, whole grains, bread, beans uh, with fruit and vegetables, uh, health, olive oil, um, uh, sometimes in the week, maybe a little bit of fish, a moderate uh, cheese, eggs or poultry, and sometimes just uh, uh, sweets and uh, red meat. This should guarantee you a good health. And that this is what we think that uh, works uh, in a sort of a way. Uh, so the Mediterranean diet is really worth to, uh, to be considered as a nice healthy pattern of, uh, of uh, nutrition. Here we come to the survey that I did, and this was uh, uh, the idea of asking my friends, and some of them are professional uh, chefs or own a restaurant in Italy, and some good friends that live there, to describe me in two words what they think that Italian cuisine means to them. And if you see the things that came together um, with freshness, with simplicity, elegance, seasonality, which is now worldwide something that we try to follow for our uh, food, quality, respect of ingredients, uh, beautiful, joyful, tasteful, all these things um, probably can give you an idea uh, that uh, is not only about food, there is something more connected to it. And uh, what, but when we talk about the ingredients, um, that without which like the Italian cuisine would not probably exist. Uh, we were more or less, uh, many of us were, um, we, we agreed that uh, without uh, uh, the grains, but the flour, we could not uh, actually have our major uh, product like 
pasta, pizza, or bread. So flour, uh, different types of flours, of course, but this is the main ingredient. Uh, another ingredient that we got, uh, but not is not just only in Italy, is an ingredient that we have uh, in the Mediterranean area, is uh, the olive oil. And uh, when you buy olive oil, just please double check it three times that you get uh, cold pressed extra virgin olive oil. And uh, the darker the container, the better it is, because olive oil doesn't like light and uh, uh, warm temperature it has to be kept not in the fridge but in a dark cold place so like tins is a very good idea and then you can fill it up and use it do not leave it open uh, for a long time it oxidates fast but olive oil is an amazing product to be used and you cannot think about it uh, without in without not using it in the italian cuisine parmigiano reggiano parmigiano reggiano i can say like the king of cheese uh, for Italian. Eh? I'm not uh, having any comparison to French cheese or so, but the Parmigiano Reggiano is just a great uh, ingredient. And then we have uh, Pomodoro. Pomodoro is interesting because you think Italian cuisine is just like Pomodoro, tomato sauce is everywhere. Tomato sauce uh, appeared in the Italian cuisine only at the end of the 1800. Also, if it was brought back by the Americas, but uh, uh, that is when uh, it was introduced in the Italian cuisine and, and in the Southern Italian cuisine. So, uh, but now we cannot think about it uh, without it. And uh, Love and time are also two uh, important uh, characteristics of, uh, of uh, cooking, uh, any kind of uh, cuisine. But uh, for this two particular love and time, I introduced you to my mom. And uh, my mom, this uh, was uh, an interview that I did uh, to her 20 years ago when I came back from this travel around the world and I was working at a project of a book. I uh, was interviewing people uh, in, with the same question. I studied uh, to be a journalist, so I had this approach, a kind, of, a kind of a journalistic approach. Same interview, same questions all over the world in the places where I was uh, to get uh, answer. Um, and to, through this conversation and doing this interview, we would just get closer and then we would go together to shop. We would, uh, 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 they would cook for me and I would just, uh, uh, talk to them and record them and uh, and my mom decided to do a very um, simple but uh, delicious recipe for me she told me then a lot of she told me a lot of things so during this interview and one of the things that I was doing was always to uh, take pictures also of the refrigerator of the people that I met if they had no refrigerator of the place where they store their food and uh, and in this particular, so you will see some other pictures afterwards. Uh, and remember, that was part of this project. And uh, the recipe that my mom gave me, and I'm sharing it with you, is called peperonata. Peperonata means stewed sweet uh, bell peppers. And uh, it's really easy. You can use it. Uh, you can make it in half an hour. You can eat it then uh, um, just as a side dish. Uh, or you can uh, add a little bit of capers or maybe some olives and make a wonderful pa pasta sauce. Or just uh, toast some ciabatta bread and just uh, eat it cold on it. So is peperonata has... 20 different uh, variation in we have 20 different uh, uh, Italian region 20 variation that's re that recipe is just one of them but uh, you might want to uh, follow it and if you're interested we can just send you a, a copy then after the lecture now uh, I just went for a comparison because uh, uh, when you come uh, and we take you around uh, Italy and we go out for our dinners, uh, most of the times maybe there are some expectations that are not fulfilled or maybe you think about uh, getting something because you have experienced the Italian-American dishes and in Italy you might find something different. So let's start with some iconic uh, traditional dishes and see the comparison. This uh, is uh, uh, tagliatelle al ragù bolognese. 
Bolognese sauce, you might know it, come from Bologna. Bologna is a town in Emilia Romagna, the uh, uh, center uh, north part of Italy. Very incredible country, very rich in ingredients, in tradition. And this is the meat sauce that you will have. So uh, compared to maybe an iconic dish from the United States that we do not actually know that much in Italy, spaghetti with meatballs. Um, we have this uh, uh, size problem here that you might see. Uh, if you have maybe this pasta dish in Italy, then the size is relatively small. You can combine it then with maybe a, a main course or some vegetables or a little uh, appetizer. But I think when you have the spaghetti with meatballs, it's such a big size and uh, to be honest with you doing this research about the emigration then of course when the people started in the late 1800s to cook uh, the, the the immigrants the italian immigrants they cooked uh, pasta because that was their main meal and then they could buy um, ground beef or or chicken that was not that expensive they would use it and just maybe overdo it so the size would be really big and uh, so let's go to another iconic dish, pollo alla cacciatora. Pollo alla cacciatora is pollo, chicken, P-O-L-L-O, -L -L pollo. Uh, cacciatora style, so with maybe some mushrooms and some herbs. If you have a serve in Italy, this is the recipe from Toscana, is just the meat that you see in a plate and a couple of pieces of bread just to dip in the sauce. Instead, uh, a chicken cacciatora that you have uh, uh, maybe in the United States, I got these pictures from different restaurants, uh, United States restaurant advertising. So it's not homemade cooking. For sure, you cook in, in a different way maybe. But this is again a big serve of pasta. And what is something that you will not see that often in Italy is this pasta that is not tossed into the sauce. When we serve the pasta, the pasta is tossed into the sauce. It's not just boiled and put as a base, uh, as carb, let's say as boiled potatoes, and then you put the sauce on the top. You have to mix it. So uh, this is another uh, typical dish. I think you start to get hungry here. Is scaloppina di vitello ai funghi. Scaloppina is like a thin slice of meat. Vitello. V-I-T-E-L-L-O is veal. Uh, fungi is mushroom. Uh, and this is typical, for example, of Northern Italy, of Lombardy. Uh, when you might have something again in the Italian American iconic dish is veal parmigiana or chicken parmigiana. And normally you have this predominance of this tomato sauce. So the tomato sauce is really kind of dominant, a lot of cheese then might maybe you need. And again, the carbs in form of pasta are always on the plate, but we tend to separate it. And I will explain you later how it works. Another iconic dish from Roma, uh, from Lazio, so the capital city of Italy, spaghetti alla carbonara. Spaghetti alla carbonara is uh, spaghetti that they are, uh, the, the dressing, the sauce, is just uh, beaten egg, parmesan cheese, guanciale, that is a special kind of, uh, of um, bacon, and uh, black pepper. Mm -hmm. And here we come to something that was Italian. I am sorry, I'm really opinionated uh, here, but uh, I cannot eat myself. This fettuccine Alfredo. Fettuccine is also something that comes from Roma, uh, from the same area. This is egg noodles, um, and they swim in this white sea of sauce. Uh, that is mainly a uh, roux, uh, that is a uh, uh, flour uh, mixed with uh, some butter and then some milk and you make a kind of a creamy thing and then you add some cheese in it or and it's, it's there is not really that much of a taste so i would understand if this would be for example a nice four cheese sauce like the uh, potato dumplings uh, that you see uh, on the uh, authentic regional Italian dish coming from Valle d'Aosta, the mountain where you get the great cheese, they do potato dumpling, gnocchi, and they have the cheese sauce. But 
uh, fettuccine alfredo is just something that if you will ask it in Italy, uh, they will know it if they have a very touristic restaurant, but rather than that, you will not find it. Uh, mac and cheese, it's a good compromise because you have pasta, you have a cheese sauce, uh, you grill it a little bit to get this nice crust, so this would be something. Another surprise is if you order uh, a pizza in Italy, that by the way, when you order a pizza in Italy, you get one pizza for yourself. We do not share. <laughs> Everyone gets his own pizza and uh, 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 it's not sliced. So you have to cut it yourself hmm? normally. But if you ask a pizza con peperoni, peperoni, as you have seen the recipe of my mom before, peperoni means bell peppers or sweet peppers. Uh, this is not a common topic, uh, a topping for the pizza. So I had to look uh, extra to find it. But in New York City, if you ask for a pepperoni pizza with double P, then you get a pizza with salame on the top of it. So be careful when you are in Italy, if you expect a pepperoni pizza, you will get something completely different. Getting now to the end, uh, Italian um, serve, as you have seen already, uh, the kind of there is a separation between the courses and when you order for a, a salad it will be maybe a small little uh, bowl of salad uh, um, as a side dish and there is dressing that normally is put on the table oil and vinegar and you have to dress the past the salad yourself and sometimes when you order an italian salad instead in uh, in an Italian American restaurant, you might have a big, huge serve with also croutons and Parmesan cheese and olives, uh, and maybe this uh, an Italian dressing that is uh, something that in Italy normally you do it yourself. Okay, so now we come towards the end, and uh, uh, I would like to help you out um, if you go then dining or eating in an Italian restaurant or, or a pizza place or whatever, uh, just to know what to expect. Um, we do have a separation of uh, courses, so you will have uh, antipasti, that literally means before the meal, and this you can translate it as appetizer or cold cuts or regional specialties. Then you have primo piatto, primo means first, first course, and this could be pasta or a soup or a risotto. Then you have a secondo, that means second, uh, but we translate it maybe as a main course, could be meat, poultry or fish. Then we have contorni, it's plural, contorno with O would be uh, one, contorni, plural. And these are side dishes, could be vegetables, could be roasted potato or salad. Dolce, D-O-L-C-E, is dessert, something sweet. Uh, and uh, um, this is uh, like uh, what you have as the different uh, classification of the courses, but you don't have to order them all. Huh? So when you go to an Italian restaurant, you choose what you want to have, unless it's a local trattoria where they have a set menu and then you just, they serve you. But here are some kind of... Um, important things you might want to know when you go into an Italian restaurant. For example, that when it's bread on the table is actually there uh, not to be eaten as like a um, just to, to wait while you are waiting for your orders to be served is uh, uh, there because probably you're going to get a main or you're going to get a salad and then you can just uh, uh, help yourself to clean up the plate with the nice delicious sauce like of your cacciatora, pollo alla cacciatora, but uh, uh, it's not like an appetizer. Huh? And, uh, and do not expect also uh, butter and bread because this is something that is not Italian. Um, olive oil and vinegar, for the same reason, what you have on the plate, on the table, is there mainly to dress your salad. So the dipping uh, in oil and uh, normally in oil, um, if the restaurant invites you to do so, is because they want you to taste maybe the good uh, uh, olive oil, but rather than that, is also not uh, uh, supposed to be done. Huh? Uh, also, we have some very strict rules where Parmesan cheese has to be used as a, as a 
extra topping and this is only on special courses and they bring you the parmesan cheese uh, so it's not there on the table to be used to put everywhere because it's salty it's uh, it has a strong flavor so it can compromise also the the the, the simple flavors of your dish uh, hot beverage cappuccino uh, tea cafe normally are not served uh, with your meal in italy we just have different drinks but not hot drinks if you order for un caffè uh, caffè uh, means italian coffee and uh, for italy un caffè is only the one that you see in this picture that you call it espresso this would be at the end of your meal just to cleanse the palate to just give you a very nice flavor at the end of your meal you can have your cappuccino that is uh cafe with uh, uh, um, foam of milk and hot milk for your breakfast but after like 12 o'clock uh, not other beverage rather than this cafe during the day at the end of a meal and this is something that you can find everywhere delicious i don't drink any coffee but they tell me it's delicious uh tap water Tap water is perfectly fine in Italy, but Italian, they love their uh, uh, mineral water, bottled water. Uh, among different countries in Europe, we are the one that have just like the uh, biggest varieties of it. Therefore, in a restaurant, they would not really be, they would not be absolutely happy to give you tap water. If you ask for it, acqua del rubinetto or acqua in caraffa. Caraffa means uh, in a jar. Uh, they normally will not serve it to you um, and generally you will get no ice in your drinks and there are no refilling so every time you order for water you pay for it huh? and remember to ask if you want to have it fizzy or not we like fizzy water a lot of times so you have to specify it uh, when you're ready to leave the restaurant and you can decide when you want to go because the table is yours um, you don't have to be rushed unless uh, uh, they ask you when you arrive before uh, if they have it then um, ask for the bill and uh, tell them that uh, to have uh, or ask before you start the meal uh, that you have a credit card you would like to pay with credit card or if you want to have general so separate bills because sometimes we have it all together and we share afterwards and then check always the menu before because there could be an extra charge called il coperto that is a cover charge so you might want to check this as well okay so now we come to the end and i'm sorry i know i heard the beeper i need still one and a half minutes uh, my secret for uh let's say the best uh, um italian cuisine is first of all one that you would not think about it but is also healthy and this is eat your pasta al dente al dente is to the bite it doesn't have to be soft it has to be cooked but not overcooked just shortly before it's cooked it is really to have a little bite in it because the uh, it has a lower glycemic index that means it's healthier your blood sugar doesn't raise the, uh, very uh, fast you do not get hungry after one or one hour or so it keeps you satisfied longer and this is healthy and then less is more uh, smaller sizes generally because then you have a bigger variety of things in the Italian cuisine then we do not overload everything with garlic or with dry herbs uh, because that overpowered the, the ingredients and uh, uh, freshness a natural product and uh, a great variety of ingredients you have it in the US we have it almost everywhere so just go for freshness and uh, so that's my my let's say my my invitation to you to cook to learn how to cook because everyone can cook uh and just to discover things and uh, it's a pleasure for the palate but it's a pleasure it's a way to communicate it's a way to share with the moment with people tradition uh experiences and friendships so i would like just to give you now a hint of uh, um like some pictures that i've taken uh that I've received from friends, uh, from experiences with uh, connected to food and cooking. E poi quando mi prende il mattino si perdono per la città e riempiono tutte le strade che a Roma. Gli amanti sono 
tanti ma quanti chissà